Well, welcome everyone to CSI, Create a Source of Inspiration. We love to have you here. We love to bring you different stories and help inspire you and uplift you and just have the most gorgeous, wonderful day that you can possibly have. And so today we have a very special guest. We have Mitzi over here that has something very special to share with you today. And she has a story, always has a story, but the story I want her to be able to share. We also have my co-host Colleen today with us. And so just sit back, relax. We'll be with you for 20 minutes to 30. Give yourself a break. Enjoy yourself just to breathe for a moment and have some water in the process. So welcome, Mitzi. It is wonderful to have you here today. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, it is our pleasure. It really is. And when we're speaking about inspiration, I mean, you just went through an amazing process of months on end. Actually, the formulation was really over a year or so uh, to bring something very special to people. But before we get into that, but we are going to get into that, the big question I always ask, because pr perspectives are so different from every person, what is inspiration to you? That is such an open-ended question. And depending on the day, I might give you a different answer. So <laughs> today's answer is um, inspiration to me is something that feels aligned. It sits where it makes me feel centered and it makes me feel easy, like mm. um, no pressure right? It sort of lights me up from inside. And that can be different. I mean, some days I'm really creative and some days I'm more contemplative, but they're both inspirational to me. There's this process I go through where it's sort of finding my way back to my center, right? When I get crazy and overworked and overwhelmed, um, going within and sort of finding my way back in, that's inspirational to me. It's It's because when I am in that space of being centered, seated, and aligned, anything is possible. Oh, that is so beautiful. And that is so true. And this is fabulous information for any walk of life. This not, you know, a lot of people believe inspiration is just, oh, kind of woo-woo and untouchable. But the truth of it is, no, it's all within us. And it is about really coming back home. Exactly. And I think you actually, in order to get the woo-woo stuff, you actually have to come from your centered being. So it took me a number of years to discover that. I was always searching out there, going, you know, looking for the thing. And um, I now realize that it actually comes from within. Yeah, it absolutely does. It's, but it is counterintuitive of what we're taught. We're taught to seek out there and and uh, be able to chase this and make that happen. And with all that type of understanding, it's like, wait a minute, what do you mean come within? I have answers inside of me. Well, no, I don't. If I did, I'd know, right? Except exactly. People aren't within themselves when they're saying all that crazy stuff. They're all up in the head, not really in the heart. Yeah. And that was me for most of my life. I was looking for someone else to tell me what was true for me. Right. I kept looking for them to give me the thumbs up. Yep. You're doing it right. Or yep, that's it. And, you know, it's an endless cycle of chasing, right? Of always doubting yourself and second guessing yourself. And so when you can get to the place where I just feels like I just keep seeing this image of being seated in my body, right? In my beingness, then like I said before, anything is possible. I get to decide what works for me, right? And I get to try something on and not I used to be so um committed. If something, if I tried something on and 
it didn't work, that was a scary thing for me. I didn't want to pivot. I didn't know how to pivot, you know? So when you come from a place of being centered, you realize everything is just an experience. You can try something on. Uh, yeah, I tried this. I don't like it. Okay, I'm just going to, let's try this over here. And I wasn't always that, that way. Uh, I wasn't always able to do it that way, but um, it's way more freeing when you can do that, when you let go of the attachments and the meaning that, that I personally attach to everything. Exactly. It's it's the, that freedom. Yeah. It's like like the wings behind you. You can just soar. Exactly. When you're in that space. And one of the uh, visuals that I do in breathing work and envisioning work is to actually for people to see a mini them sitting right inside in the core. And when you can actually feel all your energy come back to that mini me, it's like you can just breathe, relax and let go. Exactly. And yeah. From the physical point of view, it is amazing for your physiology. Yeah. So yeah. there are extreme practical applications to this, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have to get out of our own way sometimes. Yeah, we do. And it allows room for magic at the same time. But <laughs> love that. Yeah. Speaking of which, okay, I know you have this amazing story to share of inspiration um you may have a different story than what i'm thinking of but that's okay because then I'll, we're going to bring a little part of something else back but i would love for you to share one of your inspirational stories to the audience here Okay, so I, I find this inspirational. I hope the audience does. <laughs> um, I want to tell you about the time that I had an out-of-body experience. So is that the one that you're thinking about? No, but I love it. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> I had a feeling it wasn't going to be what I thought. Okay, here we go. Um, so a little backstory. I was, um, went I began my, my healing journey began almost 30 years ago now. And in this time, I have always been searching, like we were just talking about. I'm always, I was always searching for the next thing, um, trying to expand my horizons, always trying to make, uh, make it feel like I knew what I was doing. Right. So as along my healing journey, what I help women do now are the things that I've gone through. I didn't know it at the time. But part of this was I got into energy work because it was um, something that I was always involved in, although I didn't know it at the time. That's a different story. But in this um, story, I have I was taking learning how to do quantum healing, and I was at a retreat. We were getting our certification. And um, there were a bunch of us there. I don't know, like twenty of us there. And we were just, goofing around. Uh, we had some free time. So we were running energy on each other. So I was on the table. The facilitator was on one side and the other facilitator was on the other side and they just were going to run some energy through me. Mm -hmm. And the one on the left side put her hands on me and started speaking light language. And the second she did that, I had all of these visuals come on my inner screen of Egypt and this royal blue colors. And I was out of my body gone so I don't know what your audience is into but um I went multiple dimensions like 164th dimensions I had some amazing experiences um saw beings that are not of earth saw universes um I was gone for a long long time it actually took me more than a week to come fully back into my body but this, and that was, this is the event that actually triggered my own light language to come on. Mm -hmm. But the important thing was that when I came back, I had this knowing, drop dead knowing mm -hmm. that self-doubt is a colossal waste of time. And that really hit me because my whole life, I never doubt, I always doubt myself. I never believed in myself. I never thought I was good enough. I was always chasing that thing to prove, to validate who I am. And that actually catapulted me um, 
I now believe that this was just part of my own journey. I was meant to have this, like maybe I needed a little boost or a little reminder that, girl, you got this. So stop messing around and get to the work you need to be doing. <laughs> um, so it was the, the, the kind of weird part was that the people around me did not know how to process what happened to me. Like they spent several hours trying to get me back into my body and I was having none of it. I was, it was so amazing out there. I didn't want to come back, but I was also doing a lot of things. It took me, this happened um, two and a half years ago and it took me a full year to really process everything. Um, still processing. Uh, no, I, I feel like I'm pretty well processed through it now, but there's just different layers. But the most important piece was stop doubting yourself. And it changed the way that I show up for my clients. It changed the way I show up in my life. It catapulted me into the next phases of my healing. Um, it was actually a really, really magical experience. That's so fantastic. And yes, it 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 is magical. It is invisible to this realm, but it's very real. Yes. All multi multiple dimensions are there. It just depends on where your journey needs to take you. And so the universe did that for you. But I'm going to ask you, a lot of people won't understand the term light language. Okay. If you could explain that a little bit for them. So light language is communication at the soul level. When And everybody has their own version of light language. It's like uh, we bypass the human brain. So if I were to speak it to you, and if it was uh, something that would resonate with you, your system would take it in, bypassing the linear brain, and it just hits your essence, and your higher self knows what to do with it. Okay. But it's not words it's not word. well that's not english that, words. that okay not recognizable words correct as to whatever your normal language would be whether or not you're english speaking german speaking japanese speaking it's not like that no it's different totally different tones sounds um i mean when i speak it i don't recognize it i've had some people that have said that they recognize it. Some people really resonate. They get goosebumps or they, whatever their tells are. Um, but everybody's is a little different. And I think that there are, we're all from different, uh, there are several soul families that we are groups, you know, we come, uh, we're all part of a group of soul families. And I think that helps resonate someone's light language for you or not. Yeah. Um. I understand that. Folks, are you are you staying with us on this one? <laughs> I know some of you are, and I know some of you are just kind of intrigued a little bit. Um, so what is she talking about? What do you mean she almost didn't want to go back into her body? Um, yeah, these are real experiences, but when you do return, you come back with a knowingness. Yes. It is, it's a reconnection to all of who you are, actually. Exactly. Reawakening in the human body that even the mind now knows, the conscious mind now knows, even though you can't necessarily scope it out yet. Like you said, it took like almost a year to process all these different pieces. And sometimes we don't consciously process all the pieces either. I agree. And I like to think of it like trying to put 10 pounds into a of flour into a five pound sack. That's what it felt like. Like when I left my body, I expanded. I just, I was experiencing all that I really am. And so then to try to come back into this very confining form that we're all in, um, that was the struggle for me. That was my resistance because I had spent some time out there remembering, right? This is what we all, this is part of what I help my clients do is remember actually who they are. We're not this physical body. We're not all of the um, trauma and conditioning that we carry. We are so much more. We're here on earth to learn, to play, to grow. Um, but this is just a really small piece of who we are. Yeah, exactly. And so when I do work with, whether it's workshops or my clients or whatever, 
and Colleen can certainly attest to this, it's always about how we are funneling the bigness, the fullness of us down into this itty bitty expression. And so in that total compression, 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 some of our circuits get broken or skewed or any of all those different things. And so we take on things from a distorted perspective until we start reconnecting and reawakening. It's not just waking up, it's a reawakening because we are, we are it all. Exactly. And, um, but it's very interesting about that self doubt portion. Cause yes, because definitely gone through it for years myself and always asking the how to, okay, how, uh, how to how do we do this how do we do that because little snippets would come back and little like magical things would happen and uh, you know and you go okay so i didn't control that how do we control that it's like all these things but constantly looking out until eventually spirit said oh no you're going to write the how to yeah so so and there we go but it is from the physical sense that when we are always looking outside of ourselves, that's how we burn out faster. Because we're only writing the checks of our energy, putting it out there. We're not balancing ourselves. We're not looking at the, the flow of energy, the to and from energy at all. And so it is magical as far as I'm concerned, uh, <laughs> and the people of my tribe, that when we do come back inside, it's like all possibilities are there. And the level, there is no such expression of self-doubt then. I mean, that's just beyond our even our conscious mind at that point. But there's a lot that can pull us off course as we're yes. going through this human expression though. Yes, I think so, we get bogged down and weighed down by a whole bunch of things. And I think that was part of the reason I had my experience was to help flush the rest of that out. Cause like I said, I'd been working on myself for a long time, but then it, it also helped me understand that in order to reach this magic, you know, this woo, our, our magic, you actually have to clean up the human stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to get all of that stuff out of the way. So that's kind of the piece that solidified for me and with my work moving forward um, is when we actually clean up the human stuff and are embodied, mm -hmm. we can actually go farther. We can actually oh. experience more than when we are carrying a line of trauma and conditioning, old belief systems. They sort of keep us um, from expanding as far as we can. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a, all those things are actually toxic frequencies to us. They're lower frequencies yep. and our fullness is higher frequencies, but that doesn't mean when people refer to, Ooh, our higher self or a lower self, that's kind of a misnomer. Yeah. in all of that because we are the higher self exactly. it's just what frequency level are we operating on which will or won't attract our conscious desires but it still will attract our unconscious beliefs exactly so the more we clean that up the more our conscious beliefs are the ones that will rule so always clarity rules right 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 exactly <laughs> So putting self-doubt up on a shelf now, okay, okay, um, because it's no longer hanging on you yeah. and taking up space within your being. In your expression, you want to help others clean up different aspects of themselves. Mm -hmm. I got to meet you under the understanding of this amazing 
retreat you wanted to create to help people want and primarily women because women are the first ones that are willing to <laughs> take the plunge right <laughs> to how to show up to be seen but it isn't just about seeing out in public it's about being seen for themselves first and so you brought together this amazing group of speakers, 20 of us in all different aspects. It's everybody's at a different place. We're all different combinations. And so your, your brilliance of who you chose, when I look at the individuals, which of course, guys, we're gonna give you the link and we definitely want you to come. It's like so many layers of, where people could be as to who you brought into the fold to help speak and reach and hopefully resonate with those individuals. But having said that, so I'm so excited about all this. Clearly, it was a huge inspiration in order to create this because it's been a enormous undertaking. And anybody who's never done and put an event like this together, it is so far beyond what you think is necessary to make it happen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I'm super excited about this. Um, this is my second event. And it's important to note that because the my first event was last year. And all of those things you said are so true. It's an enormous undertaking. But this year, what I wanted to do is I wanted to, first of all, I never thought I would do it another one. And this year, I just get the nudge like, let's see what you can do, but I wanted to do it differently. So I actually put my call out to the universe and said, okay, here's my vision. Here's what I want to do. I want to help women who don't feel seen. I want to show them ways that you don't have to live like this forever. There are ways to overcome the fear of letting ourselves be seen. So I put my call out. You answered it. Thank you so much. Um, as did the other people. And I, I, uh, I went through a process of vetting the people because I wanted, I, it, so what I'm trying to say is this year it was different. It was more me. I was sitting in this seated space, sort of guiding this mission. And um, truly, I just want women to feel safe enough to let themselves be seen. And it can be anything. It can be being seen in a relationship. It can be being seen at work where you speak up. It can be being seen who you really are, knowing who you are. It can be showing up in your business. So I got a, a flavor of uh, a little bit of all of that um, when I invited these particular group of speakers to come. And I just, I just love how it turned out. I when I filmed my portion at the end of it, I just cried happy tears. I was so excited with how it all came together and it just feels really really good. It feels in my heart space, it feels warm and inviting and um I know that there's something there for everyone no matter where you are on the spectrum of feeling comfortable and safe and showing all of your beautiful self to the world. So I hope you come all all come and join us. Yeah, definitely, everybody. You know, it's an entire week, okay? It's July 22nd to the 28th. Um, there's pertinent information with a registration link that you're going to get. Um, and look on our Facebooks, our YouTubes, all the different posts we have out. You'll definitely be able to find this amazing and it is once in a lifetime because every time you bring different people together, that energy combination will never exist again. Exactly. So having said that, Mitzi has also done something to make sure if it's something that you want to keep and keep reflecting to, she's giving you an opportunity within the link to go ahead and do that as well. Yeah, it's a VIP pass. It gives you access to all of the video recordings. You're also getting audio. So if you want to listen on the go, um, there's a workbook with all of the speakers, their um, talk title and the gifts, a link to their free gifts. 
there's another um somatic... oh, yeah, there's free gifts guys too yeah yeah there's some <laughs> awesome free gifts there's um when you purchase this pass there's also a somatic uh moving through fear somatic practices guide for you uh based on my own experience and things i do with my client and i am going to host a virtual women's circle that you get to be a part of if you want to join us and this is all for just 37 dollars. so a great uh investment for you you can take this information re-listen to it and every time you listen to something you get you get something new right you absorb what you can in the moment when you go back oh you have more bandwidth you can take something else in so i find it really helpful um to re-listen so that's available. It's, it's true. And from moment to moment, we're not the exact same person. We just were. Right. So when we hear something that even though we heard it before, we do hear it a little differently. And it does go deeper, especially if it's something that the universe wants to help propel us with. Yeah. But I do love the fact that you said that you sat with the universe and put out the call with the universe and so i do want to leave that with everybody today that this is possible for all of you once you come back home inside yourself and come to that still quiet space where you're not in the head as you put out your call to the universe the universe hears you but you're also putting out something a great deal, deal more clear. So you're not going to get a whole mishmash coming back at you. Important and point. All of this can be cultivated, but it takes practice and you have to show up. Yes. And you show up for yourself because when you show up for yourself, then everybody around you benefits as well. Absolutely. And so, Missy, thank you so very much for being with us today. This is wonderful. Thank you for having me. It was so fun. Oh, so much fun. And I look so forward to all next week with all these amazing speakers. Um, as far as time zones and stuff, when is are they going to be able to start viewing time so, in the day? Every uh, everyone who registers for the Let Yourself Be Seen event will receive an email every morning at 9 a.m. Central Time. That's my time zone. So that will give you the links to those that day's videos. If you join the purchase the VIP pass, you will have access to that first day's videos beginning the next day. So you won't have to wait a, a really long time to access them. They'll just be on a rolling basis. So as a repeat. As a repeat, yes. folks, yes. you get to go in the day. <laughs> yes, day the speakers absolutely. Are there. Absolutely. So every each day at 9 a.m. for seven days next week. Excellent. So there you have it, guys. You're going to see more information in all our posts and stuff, too. Please join us. Uh, we will love to have you. And believe it or not, whether you're watching anything that's been pre-recorded or something live, energy does not work with barriers like how we think. So anybody and everybody that comes and joins, you are part of the collective of energy and everybody helps raise everybody else up and uplift them and inspire them it is the truth about how energy really works exactly so thank you so very much both thank of you. you so much thank yeah. you everybody god bless until next time